Thank you for joining us today for our webinar on emotional spending and reducing expenses. My name is Josh Antis, and uh, I'm here joining you from our community relations team here at California Coast Credit Union. Uh, looks like Tara Lynn and I are both at the beach today. <laughs> Tara Lynn Rose is our presenter today. I'll introduce her in just a minute. But before we get started, just a couple of items to go over. One thing is that uh, you will be placed on mute for the duration of today's presentation. However, if you do have questions, Please feel free to ask those in the question and answer box or the chat box. We will definitely answer those for you as we go. We're at the end of today's presentation. Uh, also, uh, at the end of today's presentation, you will be asked to take a survey. That survey, if you enter, or if you fill out the survey, will enter you into a drawing for a $25 Amazon gift card. So please take the time to fill that out. It's just six questions real quick. Uh, it takes probably less than a minute. Uh, just gives, you, gives us some feedback based on your uh, experience so we can continue to improve as we go. Uh, and then also today's session is being recorded and we will put that recording on the YouTube channel we have dedicated for you as city employees. So if you miss anything, if you join us, you know, um, uh, in, in the middle of the session or want to go back and look at anything, we will have that for you. Don't worry. Uh, we will get that uh, posted probably in the next couple of days for you so you can take a look. It's all on um, the uh, landing page we have set up for you and I will put that link in the chat so that you have that for you. All right, so uh, with that, I wanna go ahead and introduce Taryn Rose. She is the manager of our financial fitness coaching department. Uh, some of you probably recognize her if you've joined us previously. Uh, we're gonna talk about something a little new today, uh, emotional spending, something that we haven't really touched on before, so we're excited about that, but uh, I'll turn it over to Taryn and we'll get started. Thank you so much. Just love this topic, emotional spending, and goes kind of hand in hand with the reducing expenses are going to go over ways of recognizing some of those emotional triggers and also give you some ideas of how to reduce some of our spending in certain categories that we have to spend money so we can have more money for the things we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. Let me go ahead and get this up here for you. I can let's see. All right, I've got the chat open. So if you guys have any questions as we go along, just throw it in the chat. We'll try and answer those questions as we go. Um, and then if we ha have it at the end, we'll have a little bit of time so we can answer questions at the end. So let me know if you guys can see this kind of give the hands up because I know sometimes I have issues <laughs> with, with this. So if I can just get a thumbs up, sorry. Um, let me know if you can see this screen. Let's see. PowerPoint slideshow. Let's see if we get this going. Maybe that works better. Just throw in the chat that we can you see it? Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So here we're going to start off with uh, just kind of the definition of what is emotional spending again and, and what are we looking for when we're trying to overcome this. So this we have these kind of behavior of spending money. It's just kind of the triggers. The what are you feeling before we go spend something? Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you angry? Are you bored? Are you pessimistic? Are you my favorite will be gone? I have this really cool list of all these emotions that we're feeling, and when those emotions trigger us to go out and buy something or go online and buy something that's that emotional spending what is causing us to spend this money that we have it's this reaction to how we're feeling and it's not a bad thing it's not a good thing it's just recognizing and having an awareness of what you're feeling so that when we go and we spend money it gives us that emotional lift right there's a release of hormones that make us feel good for a moment that can help overcome those emotions and that's where that emotional spending comes into play is when we are triggered by our feelings to go spend money and it doesn't really mean again good or bad it's just having that awareness of what's going on because if we're spending more money than we have and we have this emotional trigger that might be something that we can overcome once we recognize it so how do I identify if we are being triggered by our emotional spending? So if someone is talking to a spouse or a friend and they're talking about, you know, paying their bills or wanting to go on vacation and you're like, oh, I really, I really don't want, I have no money because I spend it all the time. I go online and Amazon and spend all my money. Uh, it might make you feel a little uncomfortable if you are hiding transactions from your spouse. If you have a separate account, they know nothing about that you are you know, they're wondering where the money goes all the time. And it's, we have these statements that you have mailed to a different address or something. Um, if we have a lot more 
packages being delivered. Amazon is not my friend. I could go on there and it's so easy to hit and hit send and, and I get this, all these packages mailed. My, my roommate used to laugh at me. She's like, every single day I had money, you had packages being delivered at the front door. She didn't even bother looking for the name anymore because most of the time it was mine. Uh, if you're eating out more often, it's really interesting. Um, I'm actually gonna share on the screen with you guys if you're eating out more often than usual, this is actually, I have a really cool handout. Let me go and share a new screen with you guys. Um, I have this really cool handout called an emotional log, and it's helping to recognize some of those feelings that we have. And it's really interesting how hand in hand spending goes in line with eating out, eating. So we have these emotional eating and emotional spending. It's all kind of triggered by the same thing. Maybe you called your relative and you got off the phone. You're just like so frustrated because they're just making you feel horrible and you go out and go shopping. Or maybe you went to a soccer practice and the kids lost. So you want to go in and, you know, help mitigate their feeling of frustration. So we have this emotional spending log that you can go in and every time you go to purchase something, you're going to log, what are you buying? Do you want it? Do you need it? What were you doing or who were you with right before you made that purchase? What were you thinking? How would you describe your mood? And how did that make you feel once you purchased it? And I think that's a really cool question to ask yourself. If you ask yourself right after it, how did that make me feel? And then ask yourself a week later when you're going back through your purchase statement and say, okay, how do I feel now about this purchase? That's a really good indication that there might be an emotional trigger if you're feeling guilty or sad or not happy about the purchase that you made. And if we go to the second page, uh, I think this is really interesting. Um, you know, what day and time? Maybe you're going after work every single Friday, right? So kind of recognizing that. Going to the mall after dance lessons, or maybe you missed that soccer practice on Saturday and you're going to take the kids to buy a, a toy or go to, so you know, go to buy pizza. Um, who are you talking to? Keep track of your actions. How are you feeling? So, you know, it's I won the lottery and I'm, here's a really good question. I'm going to put this in the chat. What is the most common thing that you guys hear when you see a football team that wins the Super Bowl and they get this question, where are you going to go in the chat? What do you guys, what do you guys, the first thing that pops into mind, they get asked that question, where are you going to go? What's the answer? Disneyland. Yeah, see, like everybody knows that answer because that is that, you know, we're celebrating something and we have that emotion and we have this idea that we have to go to Disneyland to celebrate. Or I'm going to go buy jewelry because I feel sad or I, you know, got a promotion. I'm feeling good. I'm going to reward myself. So there's a list of these possible emotions. If you're not quite sure how you're feeling, you kind of have this list in front of you and get that awareness of, of what you're feeling right before you push by. And maybe you're going to see that, that trigger, that habit, that what are you feeling? And we can find some ways to overcome it. My favorite one is this will be gone. I think that's such a wonderful word, like a pathetically sad. That's, that's kind of what we're looking at and kind of documenting those questions, those feelings that you're having as you go along. It's a really cool little thing to look at. So back to the slideshow. Uh, what causes us to spend? This has been on one of our debt workshops that we've done. What causes us to spend? We have habits, environment, image, and emotions. And I want to go over each of these really quick. Habits is just we go to work every morning and before we go in, we stop off at the coffee shop. So that's a habit, something we do every single day. We don't even really think about it. I used to go to soup plantation every Sunday after church, and it wasn't even, you know, I am just crave, I have to have their muffins. That, that's not what it's all about. It was just a habit. And I was spending all this money at soup plantation without even recognizing it just because it was a habit. So I kind of want to understand those habits and kind of find some ways once you track it and you become aware of that timing, that might be a way to overcome those habits. It's really interesting when we're looking at those emotions and what's causing us to spend money. There's actually, when you do something over and over, it creates a neurological pathway in your brain. It's really fascinating, the science behind it. Your brain says, okay, you're doing this all the time. I'm going to create this neurological pathway so you don't have to think about it, right? I'm going to take over for you. You can go do whatever you want to do. And so in order to overcome that, it takes about three weeks to overcome and create a new habit. And the entire time you're trying to create this new habit, 
you have this neurological pathway in your brain that's pulling you back saying, relax, I got this. You don't need to work so hard. Don't think so hard. Just go back to the way you've always done it. So it's really hard to overcome that. And one of the reasons why we struggle is that this whole time we're trying to create this new healthy reaction to some of our emotions, we have these old habits that are pulling us back. So having that awareness, using that log is a really good way to overcome those habits. The other thing we have is the environment. And these are all of the commercials and advertisings on the radio, on the TV, on the billboards. Everything around us is constantly bombarding us with you have to have the biggest, the best, the most. You have to look cool. They're kind of going in and triggering that, you know, that, that self-image that you have that are you as cool as Matthew McConaughey driving that cool Lincoln Continental? If you're not, if you don't have this Lincoln Continental, you're not as cool as Matthew McConaughey, right? So we have to overcome those triggers around us, those, that, all of those advertisings that we hear, that we see, and kind of take a step back and say, okay, yeah, Matthew, Matthew McConaughey is cool, but he's also a millionaire. <laughs> I'm not a millionaire. I have to live within the income that I have. So the, to overcome that, we have to, again, look around us before we buy something. And so in the chat, is there any article, any TV advertising, any billboard that you've seen in the past couple of days that has triggered you like, yeah, that's really cool. I want to have that because it's, you know, Matthew McConaughey or I don't know, Sofia Vergara, whoever you like is modeling this and you're like yeah that's really cool like is there anything that you guys have seen any advertising that i know cell phones is a big one um you know everybody has to have the newest and the best so we see all the advertising of taking the really cool pictures any advertising out there that you guys have seen that just kind of triggered like yeah that's really really cool anything that you've seen the matthew mcconaughey one got me because you know yeah 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 i gotta have that <laughs> iPhone 13, yes. Yeah, I mean, everybody's, everybody's got one, right? That goes down to the image, which is that keeping up with the Joneses idea. And this is what's really interesting because you look around you and everybody's got the new iPhone 13. Everybody's got the new really cool shoes. Like when we talk about the advertising, it goes right back into that image. And especially if you've got kids, you know, I'm gonna totally age myself. The Michael Jordans. Everybody had to have Michael Jordans. He was the greatest of all time. And everybody, you know, was advertising. They had movies and that was around us all the time. And this is that keeping up with the Joneses. All the friends have the new iPhone 13. All the teens have brand new cars. But if you really take a step back and look at that, that trigger of, you know, God, I, I feel less. And how do I overcome that? Well, it's really, if you take a look at that person who lives next to you and they've got the new boat and the two new cars and they had brand new bookshelves installed for $10,000 and they had a mural that was painted in their house and you know they're just spending, 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 you might not realize that they're teetering on the brink of bankruptcy. They're spending beyond their income and they may not be able to afford that. I had a member who... I met with who made $300,000 a year net take home, but was $300,000 in credit card debt and thought he was okay. And it was just because he was trying to keep up with that image of I'm the big shot. I've got to have all the new things. I got to have, you know, all the, 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 he had an airplane. He had two new cars. He had the brand new phone. So this is that keeping up with the Joneses, taking a step back and recognizing that kind of inferiority image that we have and understanding that I'm not going to live in the income of my neighbor. I'm going to live with the income that I have. So kind of recognizing what's around us, especially if you've got kids, that's a really, really hard thing to overcome because they go to school and everybody's got the new phones and everybody's got the new cars. But again, they might not be living within their income either. So just kind of take a step back and recognize that and say, this is my income this is how I want to spend it. And that goes right onto those emotions. All of these things that we're feeling, how do we overcome it? Recognizing it is the number one tool that you can have. So use that emotional log, recognize what your triggers are, recognize what you're feeling before you go spend it. And then 
one of the things that I have found has been really helpful to overcome that emotional spending is setting up a goal of what I want to achieve with this money that I've earned. Again, I have this finite amount of money that I've earned. What do I want to do with it? And so another really cool tool that I have for you guys, I'm going to share another screen with you guys. This question is actually what I want. The questions to stay on track. So this is every time I go to buy something. When I first started doing this program 13 years ago, is the I printed this out. I put it in front of my computer. <laughs> I put it in my wallet. I put it in my car. I had these questions everywhere. And every time I went to spend money that was outside of my goal, I would ask myself these questions. Do I need it? Do I want it? That's like a really good question to ask yourselves. Do I want it? Do I need it? If I don't need it, why am I buying it? Is it helping me reach my goals? If it's not helping me reach my financial goals, why am I doing it? What is that trigger? What is causing me to spend this money that is going to go towards my goal if I don't spend it on that cool black leather jacket or that cool Lincoln Continental, right? So those questions are really good. And if it's a habit that you're doing, are you willing to discontinue it? What are you going to do to overcome it? It's kind of going in, getting that awareness of those emotions, asking yourself these questions every time we go to spend money is really helpful. And is there another way that I can make it happen? So one of my favorite tools that I use here is I had this couple who were wanting to overcome their debt. That was their goal. And they came in and they had bought, spent $300 on a credit card on a chainsaw. And so did they want it? Did they need it? I asked them that question. They said, well, we absolutely needed it. Like, why? What's the worst thing that's going to happen if you don't buy a chainsaw? Well, their tree is going to fall over on their neighbor's house and they're going to get sued. Like, okay, that's a valid reason. So is there another way that they could have gotten that chainsaw? So in the chat, give me some ideas. Let's brainstorm and come up with some ways to overcome that instantaneous, like, I got to have it now. There's a fear involved in that, right? There's that emotion of a fear of being sued by their neighbor. So in the chat, what are some ways that we could get that chainsaw without spending $300 on a credit card, right? Rent the chainsaw, borrow from a friend or neighbor. Exactly, less than 30 seconds, rent it. You've got all these ideas of ways that I can do it. So brainstorm. Before you go and you push that button on Amazon and buy now, ask yourself, do I want this? Do I need this? What am I feeling? What is, what is the more powerful reason that I'm buying this that's taking me away from my goals? Am I sad? Am I happy? Kind of get that awareness of what you're feeling before you can send. Always ask yourself these questions before you buy something. It's really going to help you kind of deal with those emotions that are triggering you. It's a really good way of going, uh, dealing with those emotions. Back to the slideshow. Okay, so ways to manage emotional spending besides asking those questions. Making a weekly or monthly plan. So this is really helpful when you have a plan for your money, when you have already told your money what to do, and then you have something that comes up that makes you happy, makes you sad, makes you angry, makes you fearful, and you go want to go buy something. If I have a plan for my money that's going to help me reach that goal, it might help you overcome that quick, quick little trigger of that emotionally. Like, okay, I understand that I'm feeling sad. Having that awareness. I understand that I feel guilty that I missed my kid's soccer practice. I understand I feel guilty. What's a way that I can recognize that emotion without spending money, right? Giving yourself a waiting period on purchases. This is really helpful when you're going out shopping for clothes for the kids or for yourself or you're just out and about. I saw this really cute black leather jacket and I've been looking for a really good one for a while. It was $50. I didn't have the money in my clothing account that I saved money for. And so it would have had to come out of a different savings account. And so I gave myself that waiting period. I'm like, I'm going to leave this here. I'll come back. And if I still, you know, absolutely have to have it, I can find the money somewhere. I'll come back and get it. Well, I didn't go back to get it. I just saved myself $50. I recognized that oh, I have to have it now and said, okay, no, I'm going to hold off. Now, the downside to this, I'm going to be honest, is, you know, 20 years later, you're still thinking about that cute black leather jacket. So 
just be aware of that. And my favorite way of overcoming that is setting up an account for clothing. And I put, you know, $25 every paycheck into it so that when I want to buy something, I have the funds there ready to go. My problem was I'd already spent it. So I didn't have the funds available. But give yourself that waiting period to really think about and go through the list of those questions. Littering use of credit cards until the debt is paid off or until you have, you know, bought what you need to do or done what you need to do. So I, you know, you hear this, I've actually had people that I've met with that we have taken their credit cards, we put it in a bowl of water and we stuck it in the freezer. That kind of gives yourself that automatic waiting period <laughs> so that I have to wait to defrost that card before I can go use it. That's going to kind of help me stop that spending. Don't even take your debit card or credit cards with you. Take cold, hard cash, right? That's a way to stick with and deal with that emotional spending. Um, removing account information on devices. So this is, it's super duper easy to spend money on Amazon because they have my credit card information already on there, right? But if I take that off, if I delete every single credit card bit of information that I have, on any automatic spending that I have. So anything that I have, remove that credit card or a debit card, okay? So this is a way that if I remove it and I have my credit card frozen and I have to go defrost that thing before I can use it, that's gonna automatically give myself that waiting period too. Like how badly do I really need this? You know, remove that account information makes you think twice about, spending that money. Do I want it? Do I need it? Ask yourself those questions so that we can address how that spending is helping you. Okay. So we have those needs versus wants. Ask yourself those questions. You, if you sound like I'm on re, you know, repeat, 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 because this is a really helpful tool in overcoming that spending. When you've got the awareness, because you've done that emotional log, you, you're stopping every time you go buy something and asking yourself these questions. And then understanding and recognizing that if you're spending money that's taking you away from your goals, what is the reason? What is the psychological, the physical, the emotional trigger that's more powerful than your stated goals? Because that's a really interesting thing to focus on is looking at why am I spending this money? Ask yourself why I'm spending this money is it it's not if it's not helping me reach my goals? Because if I spend this money, for me, it's coming out of my vacation fund. And that is a really big deal for me. I really want to go on vacation when everything opens back up again. I've got a vacation planned. So if I spend that $50 on that cute black leather jacket and it's coming out of my vacation fund, why? Why do I have to have that black leather jacket so much? And like, oh it's gonna make me look cool, right? So I have to recognize that emotional trigger. Asking myself these questions every time I go buy something is going to help me recognize that reason. Why is this, why is this forcing me to spend money? It's not forcing me, I have control. So I'm gonna recognize my emotion. I'm gonna say, I validate you emotion. I recognize you and I validate you, but I'm not gonna spend money that I don't have right now. We're going to move on and we're going to come up with some ways to make it happen. I'm going to brainstorm. Like maybe I can save a little bit of extra money out of each paycheck and go back and get that black leather jacket. I don't know. There are always ways to make it happen that I can, that's going to help me. The worst thing that's going to happen if I don't do this, really nothing. I have a lot of jackets. I don't need another black leather jacket. Yeah, I'm going to look cool, but I've got other jackets that are going to keep me warm. So I really, it, it really wasn't a need. Okay, recognizing my triggers is going to help me overcome that spending. So now we're going to take a look at, we kind of looked into that emotional triggers and how we're spending money and how we can recognize and live within the income. And so I want to go into some of these ways that we can reduce some of our expenses that we have, that we have to spend money on, you know, and recognizing our emotions affect the spending in these categories too, right? So groceries, you know, it's, I eat really clean. I eat really healthy. And it's something that really nowadays of that gluten-free, you're going to hear that. And people get really triggered by that too. Like, oh, you're just doing it because it's, you know, part of everybody's doing it. But there are people who actually have the health reasons. So, you know, understanding 
that we, one of the things that I have recognized as I've been buying more groceries and stocking up is we grew up and we didn't have a lot, right? We ran out of things a lot. We had, you know, fried potatoes and spam. And so if I recognize that I'm buying duplicates of things in my groceries because we ran out of things, I do not need four bottles of apple cider vinegar, but I have them, right? So I have to go in and same thing with soap and, you know, start with what I have and kind of get down to use what I have in the pantry. If I meal plan for what I have and I know exactly what's in my pantry, one of my favorite things to do right now is kind of keep, keep stock of what I have and go on to all recipes. I can plug in ingredients and come up with a recipe to use what I have. Um, have a list when you go in, pay with cash. That's a really good way. If I take $30 into the grocery store with me and I'm going through, I'm like, oh, those, I, I saw an ad for those uh, black pepper potato chips and I really want to try them because it looked really delicious, but I only have $30. I've got to buy food. Sometimes if you have cold, hard cash in your hand, that's going to help you overcome those feelings that you have using coupons, you know, that's a way that 40 cents adds up by store brands. A lot of times the store brands is made by the same company that is making the name brand. So I've, you know, find the ones that work for you and use that money for something else. Okay. Let's see insurance. Okay. So this is going into any insurance that you have. You have auto insurance, home insurance, um, any insurances that you have, I want you to take a look at it and understand your coverage. Look at your policy. Know what your deductible is. Are you paying 500, 1,000? So if I'm looking at ways of reducing expenses and I have a fear of getting into an accident and owing somebody a million dollars, you know, make sure that what you are paying for matches your needs. Um, one a really easy way, call in and ask for discounts. So as a member of California Coast Credit Union, we actually partner with Wawanisa Insurance. You can call them, get a 5% discount. And Wawanisa is a fantastic company, very well rated. They cover safe drivers. If you have any tickets or accidents, um, wait until that drops off. They usually only stay on there for three years. As soon as that three years ends, call Wawanisa and see if they can save you money. Let them know that you are a member of California Coast Credit Union. You can get a discount. Um, might have student or senior discounts. They might have loyalty discounts if you've been with them for 20 years. And if you call in and just ask, they might be able to come up with something. And because I'm a member of California Coast Credit Union, I get a discount on my cell phone as well. So call all of your companies and see if they can help open that money for you. Utilities. So this is something that, you know, if you're afraid of the dark, sometimes we leave the lights on. If you have, uh, you know, any kind of fears that affect how you use utilities. Here are some ways that we can kind of open up that spending in this area. You know what your usage is. Um, Jevin, who's our other financial fitness coach, shared a really great idea the last time is he looked at his water bill and looked at the normal usage. And then he looked at it on his next bill and it went up. He didn't really think too much about the $20 difference in the cost. But he did look at the usage and it had gone up a little bit. Then he looked at the next one and it had gone up even more, but because he knew how many gallons he normally used, he was able to call in and they had a leak and it saved him some money on his utilities. Um, Income-based discounts, home inspections. So um, SDG&E uh, has a lot of discounts they can give you um, based on your income level. They can also do a free home inspection and replace some of your high energy usage and lower that for you. Um, if you have, you know, SDG need that fluctuates a lot because you're like me and we grew up with not a lot of money. So Christmas, we always went crazy. We have all the lights. We go psycho at Christmas. And that's because of the way that I was raised. Like, this is just something that I do. There's a habit. We go crazy at Christmas. So recognizing that maybe I can cut half those lights down. I can get level pay at SDG and E and say, okay, I pay 150 during December and only $40 during the summer. Let's get the same amount all year long. Power strips is a great way of reducing my usage and unplugging. Um, if you turn, if you get a power strip for your TV, for your computer, for your microwave oven, for your washer and dryer, and as soon as you're done using those items, you turn off that power strip, it cuts that current and you stop paying for that energy 24 hours a day, seven days a week. My bill went from $149 down to $49. Um, that's the same thing with the idea of unplugging 
get the kids involved by telling them that whatever you save from last bill to this bill, you'll, you'll share with them. That gets the kids following you around and turning things off too. <laughs> All right, um, creditor payments. So I wanna kind of go on touch on this on ways to reduce because a lot of the spending that we do, a lot of the emotional spending ends up on credit cards because we don't have the money to buy these things that, that the advertising or emotions are making us feel. So I want us to go through and look at ways we can open that cash flow so that we can start paying those debts down. So leverage assets means if you have a car or if you have a home, a lot of people know that you can do a home equity line of credit. You can borrow against the equity in your home. You can refinance, take cash out. A lot of people don't know that you can do the same thing with your car, right? So if I owe, $10,000 on my car and $10,000 on credit cards, and I have a vehicle that's worth $20,000, I can refinance my car to $20,000, take that $10,000 cash and pay off the credit card debt and have one car loan. And the car loan is usually a much lower interest rate. It's fixed, it's done, the debt is done. You just have to be careful once you do that, that you don't go out and use those credit cards again. That's a really common thing is that people get this sense of relief, another emotion, when they pay off all their credit card debt and they have one payment and like, oh, I've got $5,000 available. I'll just charge $100, no big deal. And they get caught back in that cycle of using those credit cards. So if you're going to consolidate, that kind of goes to the next thing. Um, if you consolidate your debt into one signature loan, make sure that you're not going out and letting those emotions trigger you into using this, this all open credit card limits that you have again. Balance transfers are great. There's a lot of options where they offer you 0% for 15 months and we can go back in and just attack, attack, attack and get that debt gone. Uh, if you're struggling and you have a hardship and you're just, you, know, you don't want to get delinquent on your credit cards, call your credit companies. They have options where they can do interest only, they can do minimum payments, they can do no payments for a little while. And um, there's all kinds of financial hardship options. You know, don't be afraid to call your creditor and let them know what's going on so they can help you with those creditors. Okay, so there we go. We have all the tools that we need. We are recognizing that emotional spending. Use that log, ask yourself those questions. Create a financial goal for yourself so that you understand what you want your money to do. Have a plan so you can stick to that plan and recognize when your emotions are taking away from those goals that you have. Make sure you're including all of your expenses. One of my favorite tricks to overcome and you know sometimes deal and give into the emotional spending is having accounts saved for those things that I typically spend money on, like vacations, or I want to go to the fair with my kids. And so I'm going to save some money into a fun saving. Um, I want to get that iPhone 13 because I want to look cool. <laughs> I set money aside for home expenses. Um, you know, making sure that we have everything that we need planned for. So create those savings um, and, and really be aware of what you're feeling. Kind of sit back before you spend any money at all. Sit back. Ask yourself those questions. Why am I spending this money? Is it a want or a need? Is this helping me reach my financial goal? If it's not, why am I doing it? And what can I do differently? Print those questions out. Um, I have a question on here. Can someone reach out to me about a HELOC? Uh, we have the contact info. We can definitely have someone reach out to you. Uh, we have a question about the recording of the webinar and a copy of the slides. Um, let me go to the next slide. And um, there's actually, before we go there, oh, I just went back. Um, there's a really cool resource that we have online, calcosu.org slash enrich. This is a free resource. You don't even have to be a member to access this. Um, there's all kinds of tools and courses, videos, articles on pretty much any category you can think of, including the emotional spending. And then if you want to reach out to either Jevin or I and talk about your setting up a plan, um, reach out to us. You can email me and I will be happy to share with you this whole PowerPoint, all of the handouts that we have. Uh, the financial fitness service is a free ben benefit of membership with Calco. So reach out to us with any questions. We're always here. We don't charge for our service. So we'd be happy to share all this with you. Um, I love that. Share, share the webinar, share the handouts, share it with everybody. I love when people share the information uh, because I found a lot of those, especially the questions and the emotional log. It was really interesting to go for me 
to really stop and ask myself, okay, why am I going to soup plantation? I don't need any more, you know, but it, it, it was something I did with my daughters. It was fun. We enjoyed it. We got to get out of the house. How do I overcome that? How did I stop going to soup plantation? I saw that it was taking me away from my goals and I recognized that it was just a habit. And so I said, okay, I still want to enjoy that time with my daughters. I still want to, you know, enjoy that time with them. So we started doing picnics, you know, at the park or at the beach so that we didn't have to spend that money at soup plantation. So any other questions that we have? 1237, we're pretty much right on time here. Any questions regarding emotions, any questions regarding a plan, any questions regarding any handouts? Dawn asked if someone can reach out to her about a HELOC. Um, I will make sure that we reach out to you about that. We appreciate you thinking of us for that opportunity. Um, let's see. More than a recording of the webinar may have a copy of the slides. You want to address that, Tara? Yeah, Edward, I'll just email. Um, if you email me, so you got my email here, just email me and let me know that you want the PowerPoint and the handouts. I will be happy to share all of it with you. All right. It also will be posted, right? We're going to post this. Do we post this? Does it get posted anywhere? Uh, the, 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 what, the recording? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, so just to uh, reiterate what I had said at the beginning, the recording of this session will be hosted on the landing page that we have set up for you as uh, City of San Diego employees. Uh, I had put the link in the chat, but let me copy that right now and re-input that into the chat. So that, that is in the chat now, so if you would like to save that link, I would recommend it. There's more than just videos there. Uh, there's Enrich, our financial wellness portal. Uh, there's all types, all types of uh, info in regards to the other financial wellness uh, uh, services that we offer, including talking with Terrilyn and her team. But there's also info about what perks you have as an employee uh, of the city uh, that you can utilize with CalCo. So if you're opening a new account or looking to get a loan or if you refer someone, there's all there's perks for all that. So check it out. It's up and running all the time. It's there for you to utilize when you like. And it's all free. Uh, let's see, are we automatically entered into the gift card drawing? So the gift card drawing, in, or, in order to enter, uh, you will need to fill out the survey so I can uh, make sure I capture everyone's info uh, that's interested in being in the raffle. So uh, there, at the end of today's session, there will be a survey that you can fill out or there will be an email that will follow the session in the next day or two where you can also fill out the survey. Uh, just make sure that you fill it out. It's six questions again, very fast, and that will enter you into the drawing. Uh, let's see. Linda asked, I'm wondering if someone can afford it, but not really need it. How is that categorized? This goes into, is it helping me reach my goal or not? So do I want it? Do I need it? Okay. I don't need it, but I want it. Is it helping me reach my goals? So that's where that goal setting will help you overcome a lot of that emotional spending is if, if it's not helping me reach my goal, why am I doing it? Recognize that emotion that's leading you to that spending. And do I have the funds set aside for it in my account that I have? I have a spending savings, like I said, auto repairs, home, home savings, vacation and fun, um, gifts and holidays. So I have money that I'm setting aside for clothing. I have six different savings accounts. And so if I have the money in there, then I planned for it, then I can go do it, even if I don't. If I don't need it, if I've got the money set aside for it, I'm good to go. So categorizing it, want and need first, and then is it helping me reach my goal? Yes or no. If it's not, why am I doing it? And am I, am I okay with that? You know, I mean, just because you don't, don't need it doesn't mean you can't have it as long as we're planning for it and not living beyond our income. If it's creating, if it's creating a financial hardship for us, if I don't have three to six months worth of money in my account for my bills. So if, if I lose my job tomorrow, am I in immediate financial distress? Those are some really good questions to ask yourself. So if your spending is taking you away from that stability, if you don't have that strong, stable financial base of three to six months in a savings account, if I'm not putting money into my retirement, if my spending 
is taking me away from my goals and my future self because I don't want to work until I'm 90. I want to make sure I'm putting money into my retirement savings. If that spending is taking me away from that, then we really need to recognize that trigger and why are we doing it? So just kind of asking yourself those questions. That's a good question. All right, I was muted. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Any other questions before we wrap up today? Uh, looks like we don't have any currently. Again, if you do have any questions at all, feel free to contact Tara Lynn or Jevin directly. Or uh, if you would like, you can always contact us through a branch. You can call, you can go to our website. Uh, you can even contact us on social media. We uh, uh, monitor that regularly. So uh, we are very quick to respond there as well. So anything you need at all, please let us know. Uh, Don, I'll make sure that I forward your info on so we can talk to you. Uh, but uh, on the survey, there is a question that asks whether you are interested in being contacted about today's uh, content to talk about that more or about any other products or services that we offer. So you can always indicate yes on there too. And we'll, we'll make sure to follow up. All right. Well, thank you everyone. Glad it was very helpful. Yay. And uh, <laughs> Oh, and then we do have a session coming up next month. We will be doing these monthly once again. Uh, let me take a look and see. Terlyn, do you recall what it is next month? Maybe, uh, let me take nope. a look real fast. <laughs> I know, I'm so brilliant. We do so many of these. I'm so bad at remembering. Okay, so we're going to talk about first time auto buying on February 23rd of next month. So uh, we will have Kevin Watkins from New Cars Inc. He's going to talk to us about not only first time buying, but buying in the current environment because cars are so hard to find. So uh, if you have any, anyone uh, that's looking to buy a new car soon, uh, we're going to have a lot of great info there. So join us on the 23rd at noon. But until then, we will see you next time. Take care, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Bye.